Welcome to my watercolor chaos. <laughs> I kind of have a watercolor collection problem. I have student grade and artist grade. I have pans and sticks and tubes, and I'm a little bit obsessed. And you would think that obsession would, have le would lead me to being really confident in knowing what direction to go with my watercolor choices when I sit down to do a little watercolor painting. But honestly, this vast array of colors and styles of paint, or I shouldn't say styles, brands of paint, actually tends to lead me towards the overwhelm uh, rather than the, hey, let's go and explore. And so this summer, I wanted to do away with that overwhelm by taking a more academic approach to learning the differences between all these uh, kinds of watercolors beyond the academic response, which is a student grade paint has more fillers, less pigment, and a professional grade paint has more pigment, less fillers. I understand what that means. I understand there's a price difference as well, but what does that really mean when I get down to painting? I honestly didn't have a real response to that instinctually inside of myself. And so I wanted to explore what I had in a very systematic way. This desire of mine coincided with my good friend Stephanie of Demi Godet, I think it's a French word, Demi Godet or Demi Godet on Instagram. I'm gonna link all of her stuff here within this video. She has a fabulous Skillshare course that she shared with me kind of as a preview. And one of her lessons set my, <clears throat> my academic art nerd heart on fire and said, that's what I wanna do to get better acquainted with my supplies. And so I'm gonna show you the outcome of that. I'm not gonna teach you what Stephanie did. You gotta go see her class on Skillshare. It's epic and I'm telling you, it has led me to having more watercolor confidence and create, and honestly, it's transferred over into my other art, like my, my acrylic art and my colored pencil art, because what it taught me was understanding my pigments as well as understanding my watercolors themselves. So let's get started looking at that incredible book that I made, and I say incredible without feeling hyperbolic at all. I am so excited about this resource that I made for myself, and you can make something like this for yourself too, especially if you go over to Stephanie's Skillshare um, website. I'm not sure, I, this, she's my first person I've known on Skillshare, so I'm not really sure I'm referring to those properly, but I'm gonna link it all down so that all you have to do is click a button and you can go and see what Stephanie's got going on in her classes. They're for everyone, and they are full of joy and knowledge, which is my favorite way to learn. Before we get started, I just want you to know I'm going to be looking at or what I have and what I tested out. I shouldn't say tested. I, I was just deeply investigating my Van Gogh, which is a student grade, uh, Holbein, which is a artist grade, Daniel Smith, Again, an artist grade. Uh, let's see, my Windsor Newton Pro, again, an artist grade. My sticks, which are also by Daniel Smith. And again, I believe they would consider these an artist grade, but uh, you know, it's just a different type of watercolor. My Sennelier pans, also artist grade. I'm not entirely certain if Turner is considered an artist grade or student grade. I just know I really wanted to explore them because I was I had explored Turner's acro gouache, and so I was super interested in seeing what these had to offer as well. As I went through my study, I was comparing not just the paints against brand against brand, but each of these paints has a very different kind of binder. So I was exploring what that was doing for my watercolor painting as well. I went through over 80 paints, and I'm going to move these or 80, yeah, not 80 different paint brands, but 80 different paints. I was surprised. I counted this before I set the video going. I'm like, oh my gosh, no wonder this this little academic pursuit, this pigment exploration in watercolor took me an entire summer to finish. I went through 80 paint colors, y'all, and I learned a ton. Now, before we begin, I have to let you know it's going, the, this is a <clears throat> Canson Montval watercolor palette or watercolor sketchbook. 
it is going to be in this direction. So we're gonna be going back and forth just a little bit. If that makes you dizzy, my advanced apologies. If you were to do an activity like this, especially if you go over to Stephanie's classes and you really wanna take them, not just beyond uh, going through the exercise once or twice just to learn what she's doing because she's such a fun artist, y'all. You really have to check her out. But if you wanted to explore this as more of an academic way, which is what I did, definitely an option. You don't have to do it. That's not what Stephanie's saying. Like, you need to swatch all your paints. No, that was, it's called playful watercolor squash, swashing. Swatching, not squashing. I didn't squash my watercolors. I just really wanted to go really deep into nerd mode. So I considered this, this sketchbook because I wanted to keep it all in one place so I could constantly refer back to it. You'll see, <laughs> I even made myself a reference and then I took a screen, a screenshot. I don't even know how to think in, out of tech in the in RIL. This is not a screenshot. I took a photo of this. This lists all the different colors that I tested. And so when I go into a store, I have this photo in my notes app so I can look at it, one, to know which pigments I have so I don't forget. And two, to remind myself, no, you do not need another uh, ultramarine, blue, uh, ultramarine blue or an indigo. You've already got that. Don't worry. Use what you have kind of as an advice to my spend happy self when I go into an art store. So you'll see here, and this is all Stephanie's fabulous idea. You take each pigment and you study it from different points of view. Now, I'm not gonna go into how what she did or that the template or anything like that. That is her class. It's fabulous and I want you to go check it out. What I did, however, is I just went and I studied how each of my pigments was interacting under the exact same circumstances. So they're on the exact same paper. They are going through the exact same brush strokes, water usage, everything and I categorize them by color um, which is eventually coming back to you know kind of bite me in the ass because I did actually buy some more colors because I realized oh my gosh I really my reds are a little all the same I really want to go and get a uh, warmer red and a much cooler red I was also studying as I went through this this is harder than I thought to flip pages I was looking at the different binders so let me zoom in on one so you can see what it is I was writing down. Let me make sure that's right there. So I was taking note of both the color, the series of, of each one, the name, the style of paint so I could remember because you never know my brain's getting older. I'm 50. Sometimes I forget things. The light fastness, the pigment information which I found to be incredibly helpful because I kept going back and forth and then I was really beginning to memorize what they were, the pigment numbers, so that if I did see something, oh, PB15, semi or colon three, that's going to be phthalo blue. And it's going to be heavy towards the, the cooler side of phthalo blue. Um, and then I was talking to myself and looking into what made the, what, uh, the, uh, the binder. So we've got some that have honey, some that have a gum arabic solution, Let's see, I'm looking at all my different, oh, and then also, let me see if I can do this on, I'll keep me meaning zoomed. Some of my pigments, I could not find the binder. So I really love Van Gogh, but I could not find what the binder was, no matter how much I deeply searched the internet. So if you know the binder involved in Van Gogh's watercolor paints, shoot me that information in the comments. I would be deeply appreciative. And then I went and I compared and contrasted all of these colors and I learned so much and you'll see I slowly start to change what I'm exploring and I change uh, the ways that I'm doing I start to do gradients uh, uh, this is testing um, the layering I start to change my layering style just out of curiosity to see what I can do in this small square because this is over three and a half months worth of work um, I was also, oh, I forgot to say, I also have some handmade pigments here um, from a case for making in San Francisco. I was at their shop a year ago and I brought home a couple of their paints and I was really interested to see 
on how they compared with, you know, mass, mass producing paint companies. And it was very, very interesting to me. Along the way, I also started to explore, you know, how much I really don't hate brown. I didn't realize that. I mean, brown is, uh, these shades of brown, obviously brown is a very basic term that describes a vast co uh, collection of colors. I find that when I've done this, I've gotten far more interested in how brown performs in its different um, tones, to, uh, you know, what leans cool, what leans warm. You also get to see which one, which paints are highly and granulating as you go through a study like this. And I also happen, I've got to show you this. This is this was one of my bigger finds. Let me zoom in. Um, make sure I can get it all the way there. It was Shadow Green by Holbein, which is actually a black pigment, but it doesn't really come across super good on camera. But oh my lord, this is now my favorite color, and I don't believe in favorites but I now have one and it is this shadow green and I fully intend to paint an entire painting that's simply using uh, different values of, of uh, shadow green. Moving along, this is about when I started to bring in some more pigment, pigments because I was like, oh, you know what? I kind of need more. <laughs> this was supposed to make me not want to buy more paint and to realize I had a lot, but then I'm like, but you know, I don't have a yellow ochre. You know, I need a Chinese white. That would be really helpful when I did color mixing. Um, and then I also realized that I didn't really have many purples. All I had was dioxazine purples, so I wanted to explore a couple of those, but it helped me know that this is the paint that I wanted to bring home. Like I really wanted to bring home an orange, and I got two that were technically the same name, Pyrrol Orange, but different pigment piece to different pigments, and I find that kind of comparison super duper fascinating. And then we get to the end. That was 80 different colors tested. But you'll see, I kind of getting ready for more because <laughs> after studying all these pigments, I know it's supposed to make me not buy more. I, there was a sale at Blick. And so I had to find out, you know, I don't have any student grade Winsor Newton. Maybe I can spend $10 on this little mini palette, that, which, you know, how super cute is this? It can go on my purse whenever I go places. I'm gonna be testing these out now to see what's going on here. And that's what these last pages are for. I only, I actually didn't think I would, but I'm super close to finishing an entire sketchbook with this particular, um, swatching style that Stephanie was so epically awesome to let me see an early release of her course over on Skillshare. I can't recommend enough taking the time with your watercolors like this in a systematic yet fun way and just doing what artists do best, which is compare. We are natural comparers, the people who like to spend time creating art. And let's use that natural instinct to compare, to learn, rather than to make ourselves feel bad when we compare and contrast ourselves with all the other art that we see on the internet. So this is my pigment exploration of watercolor book. I hope you enjoyed the tour through all of these many paints and maybe had a good laugh at how what started out to be something that was supposed to help me save money actually caused me to realize I need I just needed a few more tubes. Just a few more. And maybe a little mini palette as well. Ah, it's a tower of watercolor. Anyways, thanks for watching y'all. And I hope this inspired you to go over and check out Stephanie's class and to get started studying your pigments and like turn on that nerd brain and comparing and contrasting your what you already have it will be so worth your time